Hi everyone, it's Eric from ecopman12.blogspot.com and welcome to my full review of the HTC 8X mobile phone. Now I must say a big thank you must go over to Vodafone for sending me this handset over to review. You can find the website at vodafone.co.uk where they are selling the HTC 8X on various deals on contract. Now let me first give you a rundown of the specs. It's got a 4.3 inch 1280 by 720 Super LCD 2 screen. It's only coming in at 130 grams so it's very very nice and light. It's got Corning Gorilla Glass 2 as well, so it's a much more stronger and durable screen. It's also got 16GB of internal storage, 1GB of RAM, an 8 megapixel rear-facing camera capable of capturing 1080p video, and it's also got an LED flash there, and it's 8 megapixels. And the front-facing camera is a 2.1 megapixel sensor, and it also can capture 1080p footage, which is very, very impressive indeed. I think that's one of the first times I've actually seen a front-facing camera that's capable of capturing at such a high resolution. And as for the processor, it's got running a Qualcomm 1.5 GHz dual core Snapdragon processor. And Snap the Snapdragon range are very, very fast processors indeed. So this phone should absolutely fly in terms of performance. Now, what I want to go into first is my good points. And first good point is it's got fantastic durable hardware. HTC are known for this, and I'd say that HTC are the best in terms of hardware because normally. Uh, people keep saying that uh, Apple are the best with their hardware. Well, they are in terms of their laptop computers, but in terms of mobile phones, the competition's really caught up. HTC are number one, in my opinion. If you drop an uh, Apple, sure, the Apple iPhone stuff looks great, but if you drop it, it's broken. More, that, more likely than not, it's going to crack, or there'll be some problem with it. HTC, I dropped their HTC One X uh, some time ago, once by an accident. It came out with no scratch whatsoever, not even a mark, and I did accidentally drop this one as well. Um quite sad to say. I normally take care of my my stuff and all the review units that come my way, but for some reason I actually accidentally dropped this one whilst I was actually in the store. And again, it came out with no scratch or marks whatsoever. So I'm always relieved that when that my phone my phone is not going to break if it comes from uh, HTC, because HTC, I'm always like reliable. They're very reliable in terms of build quality now. No scratch, no marks or anything. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the screen. Now, this is a very, very nice and colourful screen. Now, I'm just going to have to put my password in. And I really do love the screen. It is very, very vibrant and very, very clear. And even if you swipe to your screen applications here, yeah, there's just, the blacks look super black, even though this is not an AMOLED screen. And, yeah, it looks, very, very, it looks absolutely superb, especially for gaming as well, which I'll show you soon. And, as I said, it's running a 1280 by 720 resolution. And one thing I also like is the screen right over here. Now, the screen, it's got what, what seems to be like a fingerprint coating. Now, yes, you can see some fingerprints. But I've had this for about over two weeks now. About two and a half weeks. And in my first week and second week of using this, there were no fingerprints whatsoever. This just eventually just gained some fingerprints, which you can easily wipe off with a cloth or something. I just wanted to show you that, as you can see, about two and a half weeks in, these are all the fingerprints I got. As you can see, it's not much compared to other smartphones you see nowadays. And you can easily wipe this off, and there you go, it's gone. It'll keep you, it'll keep you fine for another two weeks. But seriously, I've been shocked at the fingerprint resisting, resistive coating on this. I haven't seen it when I was outside. And when I do go outside to normally, like, say, use this phone, on the lowest brightness setting, I can see the screen perfectly. And if I put it on a higher brightness setting, it's just more pleasing to the eyes and easier to see. But that's not to say that it was um, invisible when you actually try to look at the screen on the lowest brightness setting. So, fantastic screen, really nice and colourful. Props to HTC for that. Next thing I'd like to talk about is the 8 megapixel camera. Now, for photos indoors, it's not worth going on about at all, really. Even with the flash when you use it indoors. The camera on the HTC ATX really does kind of disappoint really in terms of the still image photos if you want to take family photos inside or something. Outside on the other hand the photos are absolutely superb. They're not the, be they're not the best I've seen but they do get the job done and where this camera really stands out is in its 1080p HD video capture and not just on the rear camera but also on the front camera as well. They both capture superb HD video and you'll have seen some test footage using the rear facing and front facing camera in, uh, uh, in, in, a, in an outdoor situation on my channel earlier. It's an absolutely superb camera for video capture. 1080p capture on this really is superb, mainly on the rear facing camera. On the front facing camera it's acceptable but it's still the, the best sort of front facing footage I've seen on a mobile phone. Now next thing I'd like to go on is battery life.
And battery life on this phone, no worries whatsoever at all. It is absolutely superb. When I was actually using this uh, as uh, to test out for battery life, I'm getting a day and a half easily with no problems whatsoever. So battery life on this, absolutely superb. If I, if I was, I'd turn what I, what I was doing more at medium to heavy use. If I'm a hard, more like a hardcore user, I'd get a, just a, just about a day of use with this. And if you really want to watch like loads of YouTube videos, play a lot of games and many things like that, then yes, you're going to get much shorter battery life. But as it stands, battery life on this is absolutely superb. And as you can see, very smooth in terms of uh, you know, swiping the screen and the user interface. What I like about Windows Phone is that you don't need a really high processor in order for it to run well. This is using a 1.5 GHz dual core processor, whereas all the other latest phones are using quad core processors now. And now we're going to move on to the bad things, which in my opinion is where everything falls apart. Now, I'm in this application section right here because that's what I want to talk about. The lack of applications on Windows Phone is dangerously low, like extremely low. The amount of apps you get on here are in, oh, well, the amount of useful apps you have on here are about as good as the tablet optimized apps you get on Android. I know that's really going quite far, but still, it's the apps are very limited. And I thought that, yeah, before using Windows Phone, as I said, this is my first time Windows, um, this is the first time I'm using a Windows Phone, I thought, yeah, it's not a big deal, you know, it's like, the apps will come eventually, and the few apps that we do have will have the quality aspect. Not much of them have the quality aspect. For example, let me pop into one of the apps, IMDB, for example. It's a basic app, should work, perfect, should work perfectly fine. But, whenever I tap on the first movie, on the first page, seems to be behaving. Let's do that again. And again, it seems to be working. That really... It knows I'm trying to film a video now. That's why it's not just working perfectly fine. But when I was using this initially, there was a Die Hard uh, poster on the screen. And I was actually just clicking it so I can view the video and stuff. And this app was just taking me back to the home screen. So that's very irritating. But as I said, lack of apps is really a problem on Windows Phone right now. Another thing I didn't like was no dedicated YouTube app. As you can see, there's this YouTube app right here, but that's because I actually installed this from the market. It does nothing but just take you to the mobile website on YouTube, and everything on this mobile website on YouTube is very cramped. It really, really is cramped. If I go to search for a video, like, say, mine, obviously, to avoid any copyright, and if I just go into any of my videos, plays it quite quickly, which is a very good, very good point, but... For some reason, the quality of the screen isn't really coming through on this video. It's really disappointing. Now, the speakers on the plus side are very good. Now, I'll be splitting this video into four segments. Sims 3.6, Ice Cream Sandwich, Bugs. And as you can see, this audio quality is very, very good. It does distort the loud, loudest setting, but you can not dr dr uh, you know, put, turn it down a, not a few notches. It'll work perfectly fine, it won't be that loud, but it's just kind of disappointed me that, you know, there's not even a basic YouTube app. If there's not even a stock basic YouTube app that many other devices have nowadays, then there really is a problem here. So, that's another thing I didn't like. And as I said, the photo quality is uh, not very good indoors, and another thing was that the sound quality on video recording wasn't the best. The picture quality on the video recording was actually better than the audio. Really uh, shame, really big shame right there. On the plus side though as well, as you're going to be obviously using this as a phone, incoming and outgoing call quality is very, very good indeed. No problems with that at all. Those really are my bad points. The main thing is the lack of application support on Windows Phone. And in, in conclusion, I love the hardware and the UI, but it's the lack of applications that has killed the experience for me. If something as basic and stock as the YouTube application is unavailable, then is unavailable, then that says it all. But to be fair, it does have some good quality apps, but overall it lacks the quantity and quality aspect as well. So it does have some good quality apps. For example, the Twitter app. There's got two Twitters here. Got Twitter and Tweetcaster. They're both very, very good indeed. Let's just turn that back on. They're both very, very good. If you just want to post your regular tweets, let's just uh, post one right now. And I'll just write down I'm reviewing the HCA, HCA text and you press this button to post your tweet. This keyboard on Windows Phone is absolutely great. That's one thing I'll also give it. The keyboard on Windows Phone is amazing. It really is. 
and it's really on par there with the, the Android keyboards and Ice Cream Sandwich keyboards and various other keyboards. And I do like the way you can customize Windows Phone, as you can see I've got all these live tiles here. You can make some uh, like these little square shapes or rectangle shapes, or you can even go down and make them these smaller shapes right here. So, I really, really do love the tiled interface on in Windows Phone. I really have enjoyed it. I thought it would go stale, but it's something that I did get used to and I really enjoyed using. It's just, like I said, the lack of app support is keeping me from using Windows Phone as my main daily driver mobile phone. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Eric from ecartman12.blogspot.com. Please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next video.